Hey everybody, Josh here with uh, another, I think, exciting video. This is one that you guys have all been asking for in the comments, and so it is going to be a sort of a combo how-to uh, in the how to use the new Chainwax system, how to use strip chip, and then the other question is why would I use strip chip uh, over chain stripper? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Does it save time? Does it save uh, you know energy? Does it save material? What's the story? So we are going to cover. All of that in this video where we take our Sokka chain waxing system and we wax two brand new uh, Durace 12 speed chains. One of them with strip chip, one of them we're going to treat with stripper and uh, you'll get to decide which way you want to roll when you wax your chain. All right, everybody. Uh, so we are going to do our first chain. Uh, this beautiful Durace 12 speed chain we are going to do with strip chip the new one-step uh, hot melt waxing system from Solco. We talked about it in the last video. Uh, this contains an oleogelator, a hardener. There's actually five different chemicals in here that allow the factory grease to be converted into a wax, or actually an almost wax if we're being super technical about it. The one caveat is that you do need to run the strip chip at 125 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to check. Yep, I have preset this to 125. Remember, we do our standard waxing at 75 for the pot here. I've got this preheated, and here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and open our strip chip. Uh, we pull out our strip chip bar, and we will use one of the six chips uh, to wax one factory chain. Common questions have been, you know, when you go to rewax, do you need to use another strip chip? You only need to put strip chip in if you are putting a factory greased chain in at the same time. Other than that, you just continue using the wax that's in the pot over and over again uh, on, a, on a wax chain until you want to use another factory chain. So we'll take our lid off here. We're at the 125. We're going to go ahead and put our strip chip in. It'll take a few minutes to melt, and while we do that, we'll get our uh, our chain up on our little wire hanger. So we're going to break into this guy. Cut into him like that. A uh, common question we get, you know, do I need to wax the quick link? I do not, and that is because uh, the areas the quick link mates up with will be loaded and full of wax, and when you push the quick link in, it's going to have to push all that wax out of place. Um, all moving surfaces are going to have wax in between them, and so I do not wax it. Some people do. Uh, I find that you are way more likely to uh, kind of miss when you're reattaching the quick link if it's waxed than if it's clean. Um, We've done it in testing. We've looked at it extensively. There is no difference uh, waxing the link versus not waxing the link. So there's no benefit to it. But I, I see in my mind there's a slight amount of risk just in that it, it wants to sit further apart when you push it all together. And so there's a better chance that you might slip or miss it and damage it when you're reapplying it. So I keep mine uh, drying in the bag while I'm waxing. There's a lot of people out there who uh, advocate waxing the quick link. I'm just not one of them. Okay, so we open our cable hanger. I'm going to pull this guy out. I like to just more or less do it right in the bag. Kind of minimizes the amount of dirt and amount of oil that we have around. We're going to screw it back into place here. So you have the chain like that. Uh, our strip chip is probably more or less melted, and so we're just going to drop the chain, and it sometimes takes just a little bit of kind of pushing it about to uh, to get it in. Give it a second here. It'll float down in there in a second. Um, so we push it, and take my, take my uh, scissors and just bump it in. You know, one of the comments we've gotten is, you know, could we make this bigger? And, you know, this is the biggest uh, pot of this external size uh, out there. Um, you know, you can find similar pots to this for depilatory waxing on Amazon, places like that. Uh, those tend to be 15 or 16 ounces. This is a little over 20 ounces at 600 ml. Um, it's about 12 millimeters larger pot diameter than most. Uh, it easily holds one chain. You might just have to push it down. 
Uh, but the challenge with that is if we start to make it much bigger, then it needs a much bigger heater and it pulls much higher power and it starts to get us into some different um, regimes in terms of uh, as we ship, you know, we ship these to countries all over the world, there's different rules and regulations. And so it just starts to bump us into an area where the overall cost of the pot would have to go up about 20 percent uh, if we made it more powerful with a bigger heater. Uh, the electronics would have to change. The CE certification would be more expensive. So um, we've had that question quite a bit, and that is one of the, you know, could you make it bigger? Yes, but it would also make it a good bit more expensive um, at our volume. You know, how can the kind, the nice people at Crock-Pot make and sell a Crock-Pot for 50 or $60? Well, they're selling tens of millions of them. Um, you know, we are, <laughs> we are a small company of about 30 people here in Indiana. Um, we are not selling tens of millions or even millions um, or even hundreds of thousands of anything. And so all of those certification costs, uh, they don't amortize well over the numbers of units that a company like Silka sells. So there we go. But you see the chains in there. Um, you can, and like I said, it's hard to kind of do this for TV, but you do want to just kind of give it a little bit of a shake. You will see the wax stirring around in there. You can actually see the tungsten disulfide. We'll try to get a close-up of this. Uh, the tungsten disulfide stirring itself around. It's quite pretty. Um, in, agitate, 10 minutes. I've probably already been talking for a minute and a half, two minutes, 10 minutes. Then we are going to lower it to 75. And when it gets to 75, we are going to pull it. So that is the process with strip chip. I mean, really, it's open a bag, put it in, put the chain in, you're done. While that sits for its 10 minutes, let's do our second one with chain stripper. Um, why would you keep using chain stripper? Well, with strip chip, you can do six factory chains per 500 gram bag of wax. You think about with each use, the wax is reducing in volume. If you keep adding strip chip to it, eventually you're going to have more strip chip uh, and oleogelated and hardened grease than you have original wax. And so we draw the line at six per bag. Um, this chain stripper will easily get you 16 chains, and I'm going to show you a trick and how it can probably get you up in the 30 to 35 chains if you just want to pour it through a coffee filter when you're done. Uh, this is a little bit cheaper, about $2 per chain um, to fully strip, and 10 minutes here, uh, strip chips about $4 per chain and uh, 10 minutes plus the cool down time to strip in there. So people ask, you know, is it a big time savings? It's really about equal, all said and done. Um, both of them have active time of probably one or two minutes, but a sitting time of, you know, 10 to 12 minutes uh, regardless. So we'll take our, uh, again, factory new Dura-Ace chain. Let's get it pulled out. Get our instructions away. I put our quick link aside. The quick link um, is unoiled. It is not assembled in the same rapid fire manner that the rest of the chain. There's no grease or oil on this. It is completely clean and dry, so you don't need to clean it either, uh, it, as well as not needing to wax it. Trusty ball jar. Open this guy up. We'll cut into my, where's my scissors, factory chain. We're going to just drop our factory chain into our mason jar. Open my chain stripper. Gosh, I forgot that we started uh, heat sealing these now. So, if you were one of our early customers, we had real trouble. The stripper eats a lot of the seals in these uh, in these lids, and so we really struggled to find one that would stay on. But we've now found one that works really well, um, as you've seen. So, common question, uh, we say one ounce cleans one chain, but people point out in these videos that we use about four ounces to fill, to cover a chain. Well, you can reuse it. Chemically, one ounce will eat one a chain's worth of grease, and it's probably more like half an ounce. Like I said, we've been able to push the, uh, push the chemical out to about 30 to 35 cleanings per bottle, and the key there is when you're done with this step, we're going to pour it back through a coffee filter into the original bottle. So uh, the chain stripper technique here is cover it. Uh, we are going to give it a good shake, um, which we'll turn the sound off because the microphone is like right there. We give it a good shake and then it sits for 10 minutes. So.
Okay, let that sit there. 10 minutes, Phil's gonna start the clock. Uh, in about four minutes, we're going to push this down to 75. And then while this coasts down from uh, to 75 degrees so we can pull it, um, we will do the other steps in here. So Phil, uh, give me some speedy time lapse, please. All right, I'm back. Uh, you probably noticed in the time lapse as I cleaned up a little bit, um, kind of stirring the chain around. It's one of the reasons we like this design of the cable coupler. Um, you can kind of just give it a nice turn and rotate it back and forth. Part of the process here with the, uh, the, the stripping is that you want the chain to, to be articulating a little bit because that's gonna help pump out some of the grease where it can be hardened and allow the wax uh, into its place. So we've done agitation, 10 minutes, more agitation. Then I turned it down to 75, it's coasting down. I'm now at 96. Um, it'll keep coming down while this finishes its nice coast. We'll give it another swish. Beautiful, the way that tungsten just swirls around in there, I love that. Um, Okay, uh, while that is doing that, we are gonna take, this has now been 10 minutes. You can see it's kind of clouded up, uh, looking kind of dirty. We are gonna give it another good shake. You know, the technology here we've talked about before is what we call a lift and encapsulate. It really, uh, it's not a pure solvent in the sense that it's thinning out the grease and converting, uh, kind of absorbing the grease into itself. It's actually uh, seeking metal and it is encapsulating the grease into little microspheres and lifting it out. And so again, we need that agitation uh, to allow the chain to articulate so that the, the cleaner can really get in there. Again, a couple of surfactants and enzymatic and some really aggressive, um, but organic uh, solvents in this one. So the more agitation, the better. Um, you know, this doesn't need ultrasonic. It works great in ultrasonic. It doesn't need to be heated. It works a little bit faster if you were to warm it, but 10 minutes, Handshaken room temperature is plenty good. So we'll give it another uh, another couple of shakes. And then this is the key to uh, extending the life and the, the value of this solvent. I get it, you know, $36, I think, for this bottle. It is not uh, a cheap solvent. You know, it is, I think, when you consider that it's much more environmentally friendly than some of the other solvents that are out there. And it is a 10 minute process instead of an overnight soak with multiple rinses, you know, one ball jar instead of three or four. Um, and so if you really want to extend the life, you can use this. We have a lot of bike shops out there who are doing a lot of chains and they all choose stripper and they all coffee filter uh, method the, uh, the stripper at the end of the process to make it go further. So it is literally as simple as I'm gonna stuff a cheap coffee filter uh, into a cheap grocery store funnel. Uh, get this guy open. And we are just going to pour it through. Oops, stay in there. There we go. Okay, so that's it. That's gonna run through. Uh, we'll pull this in a minute and show you'll actually be able to see all of that lifted and encapsulated uh, solvent that's in there. And then we're just going to run this guy uh, and it's residue to the sink. I do two uh, fill it here. We'll try to shoot some B-roll of it, but fill it about six ounces, warm water, shake, uh, dump that out. Six more ounces of warm water, shake. So two rinses of uh, warm water, about six ounces, eight is fine. Um, just, you know, don't skimp. Uh, pour it out and then we will be ready to go on the hook and back in the wax.
All right, I'm back. Uh, that is almost filtered through. You can see it really goes slow at the end here. Uh, it really speaks to, there's a nice coating of, of grease molecules that plug up the coffee filter. And so you can see it uh, really does start to slow down the process. I'm just gonna move that to the side. We'll kind of wipe that up a little bit. This guy has had his two warm water rinses. Put him over to the side. And so you're starting to see from a timing perspective that we're really not far off uh, the stripper process versus the um, strip chip process because of this cooling period. So there's a 10 minute soak at 125 with agitation. This process is 10 minutes with agitation. And now this has 10 minutes to cool. Um, we're, you know, dump our chain out onto our nice uh, paper towel. We'll coil it up and then we'll uh, hook that up once this guy is ready to pull. So we're at 86. We're we're getting there, we can give him a little bit. We'll speed the cooling to give him a little bit more agitation. All right, I don't know about you, um, but I know the folks at the factory here, pretty much everybody has their own preferred uh, method of taking the loose chain and getting it wrapped up. So if I'm not doing it direct out of uh, out of the package, I kind of like to do it this way. So let me uh, just kind of pull it here. Sorry if that noise sounds terrible. But, uh, so a little excess water off on our paper towel. Kind of get him pulled uh, into thirds. And then pull it down that way. And then pull it into sort of this nice little shape. So uh, funnily enough, these things are selling so insanely well that this is the only one I have at the moment. Um, so I only have one of these cable couplers. So I'm gonna let this go another couple of minutes. We'll pull and hang to dry and then we will cable couple this guy up uh, and he will be ready to go as well. Actually put him back on my, just to catch any further residual moisture. Uh, yeah, let's give, where are we now? We're at 85. We'll give this a few minutes. And uh, typically it's about 12 minutes for that temperature to come down. Um, for the temperature to come down from 125 to the 75. Uh, of note, if you are using Hot Wax X, we recommend Hot Wax X at 85 uh, rather than the 75. And that particularly with the 12 speed chains, the Hot Wax X, um, it has a little bit longer break-in period, but then it lasts much longer. Uh, pulling it at a slightly higher temperature leaves just a little bit less of it in there, and so it speeds the break-in, and you still get probably about three times the single life uh, treatment longevity that you get with a traditional wax, and that's just because of all that graffini goodness that is in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let this guy come to 75, and then we'll hook this guy up and drop him in and... Yeah, that's it. We've waxed chain. 75 degrees. Uh, time to go ahead and pull it out. We just uh, kind of give it a lift. We give it one more stir, maybe. There you are hang to cool. So that is going to need to cool for a couple of minutes. Um, and then once that is cool, we can string this uh, fully stripped and clean chain back up and drop him in there. You want about five minutes uh, to wax any chain, and that is going to give the wax or the chain uh, uh, enough time to come fully to the temperature of the wax. So the wax melter here actually will show you if the cold chain drops the temperature of the wax to 72, 73, and then it will very carefully with that super precise PID controller bring the temperature back up to a steady 75. You really want at least five minutes uh, just to make sure everything is stable. Okay, so he's gonna dry. We're gonna do uh, this guy next. I think you've seen the process. We probably don't need to repeat it again. And then I am gonna pull, oh, this guy is still uh, not done. So. What we're going to do is we'll use some TV magic here so this video doesn't get too long. We will pull this coffee filter and uh, show it to you in some B-roll. Actually, uh, check it out. Here is our 
dirty coffee filter, you can see all of that um, uh, uh, lifted and encapsulated factory grease stuck to the coffee filter, and your bottle of strip, uh, chain stripper is back up almost to completely full. You have used less than half an ounce. That's going to mean you should be getting 30 to 35 uh, strippings per bottle of stripper. So there you have it. It's that easy in 25 minutes. We have waxed and stripped two chains by two different methods, sort of overlapping using our new silver pot, uh, the strip chip product and the chain stripper. All right, hey everybody, we've come back to shoot the uh, B-roll of the uh, filter paper here. So we'll put that down and uh, we'll go ahead and shoot that from the top. Um, and then the one other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, some people have said, is it, uh, is it hard after you've stripped the, uh, the factory chain? And what I can say is it's, uh, yeah, it's every bit uh, as stiff and waxed as uh, it would be had you stripped it separately. So if you have questions, comments, thoughts, please put them below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss uh, any future product launches, but also any future uh, FAQs, uh, question and answer type sessions. Remember, it is your questions that we love so much uh, that help really define the direction of these videos. So please like, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. If you've bought one of these, uh, please tell us how it's going and what you think. And if you're waxing your chain, tell us what you think about that as well. Uh, there you have it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.